today we're going to be using a special type of um, drawing tool okay, in this box here. Uh, these are called Conti crayons. They're not crayons. They're not like crayons that are made out of wax, but they're not chalk either. Okay, they're, they're a special type of um, material and uh, these are white Conti crayons. Okay, and uh, they usually come in sticks. This, this one's a brand new stick, so it's very sharp. Um, it's never been used. Uh, after they've been used a bit, uh, they often get a little bit rounded, like this one's been used a bit. But um, yeah, they're, they're very easy to use. Um, your, your hands are going to turn white if you hold them. So don't worry, just roll up your sleeves. And um, with these white Conti crayons, you're also going to be getting a special black paper. Okay. Uh, this is a special type of uh, construction paper. Okay, it's a, uh, it's a drawing paper that's coal black. It, it looks like the construction paper that you know kids use at elementary school, but it's not the same. This is high quality uh, black paper. So uh, very smooth, very black. Uh, it's a lot more expensive than the ones that you know kindergartners use. Okay, and um, the other thing that we'll also need uh, for today's lesson is we're going to need uh, some of this uh, spray, the fixative, because um, the Conti crayons, when you draw on the paper, uh, it will smudge. So when you're finished the drawing today, you're going to have to take your drawings outside and spray them with the same spray we use for charcoal. Okay, And uh, if you look around, okay, you have to think about what you're drawing. We're using black paper and a white Conti crayon. So when you draw something, what do you have to draw? Now normally I give you white paper and a black pen or a black charcoal. So with white paper, whatever is black, you draw the black. Whatever is white, you leave. You don't, you don't fill it in because the paper is white. So what do you think happens when you get black paper? If you're drawing things... You, you draw do? the white part. You draw the white parts. Correct, Daryl. Okay, so everything that's white, you draw in. Everything that's black, you leave. What about gray stuff? If it's gray, you smudge or you blend or you shade it in. Okay. So it's a reverse of everything, okay? Maybe focus on Hong right now. Perfect example because her outfit's black, her scarf's white, and her face, uh, if you photograph it black and white, her face would be kind of gray. So if I was to draw Hong, what would I draw? i draw the scarf first because that's a really bright white, right? Mm -hmm. I would also draw these little loops here that are shiny metal because they're very bright as well. And then uh, her umbrella has like little white dots. Okay. I would probably draw those little dots in. And then I would work on her face. Her face isn't bright white. She's got some color to it. So uh, it would be a light gray. And then I work on her hair, which is like a, um, it's not black. It's kind of like a brownish. So very dark. I would have to uh, very lightly uh, shade in her hair. And in her outfit, uh, most, most of it's black, but there's some wrinkles, right? Like, so some parts are a little bit brighter, some parts are a little bit darker. So you'd have to shade uh, some parts to just ha highlight some of the uh, wrinkles in her outfit. But uh, basically, everything that's white and gray, you would have to draw in. Anything that's black, you leave out. Okay. So it's uh, the topic today is negative imaging. You're drawing um, the opposite of what you normally draw. Okay, you draw the whites, leave the blacks. Okay, so if you look around my table, I've got a whole bunch of samples that people have done. Some of these I made, some of these class uh, students made. But you can see in most of the cases, uh, looking at this one, this is a, it was a woman in a black dress. So I didn't really have to do uh, anything uh, other than just highlight a little bit of the wrinkles. Her skin was very pale, so it was very dark. but there were some some muscles and some parts that were darker, so uh, I'd have to, um, you know, accent leave some of the black showing. Okay, so you know this one's a very uh, basic one. This one is uh, another one. 
I did. Uh, does anyone recognize it? Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah, the president. The president Lincoln. Um, he was wearing a tuxedo. So tuxedo is black, but I put a little bit of shading because there's like some reflections off the fabric. But um, uh, the collar was white. His face was, uh, you know, uh, light gray. So, you know, added some of that in. Um, you know, there's quite a few. The easiest things to do when you're starting out uh, with the Conti crayons is choose stuff that's black and white. This is a tiger, and so obviously tigers, the black stripes, you don't have to draw in. The orange stripes, you fill in, right? So that one's a very easy one. Um, you can have some fun with details. If you use the corners of a Conti crayon, where it's very sharp, you can do very fine lines, like this cat, you can see all the hairs, okay? And um, there's some, can, can you grab that eraser for me? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, perfect, thank you. So uh, one of the things also that you should use is you should have one of your uh, special erasers out because these erasers are perfect for uh, removing smudges, okay? Because these, these uh, Conti crayons smudge very easily, okay? So anyway, uh, throughout around the table, I've got lots of examples you can take a look at uh, if you can't think of any ideas. But um, today, we're going to do more than one of these. And so I wanted to do a simple one first. Uh, I found a battery, OK? It's orange, black, and white. That's as simple as you can get, right? But uh, you can tell that some parts of the battery are shinier than others. So there's a little bit of. Um, there's a bit of a challenge here. So um, if you find something in color, you can ask me to photocopy it. And then uh, when I photocopy it, it turns uh, black and white. And now you can see what you have to do, right? Mm. So uh, if I was to do a battery, you know, I can use the Conti crayon just to make the cylinder. Make a cylinder, correct. Remember we made cylinders a couple of weeks ago? Mm -hmm. And that's just a guideline, just to kind of get the overall shape. Now, I don't want everyone in class doing batteries today, but it, this one is something I can do very quickly. And uh, at the same time, there's enough uh, detail here to show you a couple different techniques. Okay, so I've outlined the overall shape. Okay, and so uh, obviously the most the brightest part of this battery is are the words Duracell, okay? So I might not write in the entire the, the letters, all the letters, because I don't have enough time today to do that, but I'll do a couple of them at least, okay? Okay, so I'm just doing some very faint guidelines. Now, because the words Duracell are the brightest parts, when I actually fill it in, I'm going to have to press down pretty hard. Okay, so these letters, yeah, you just have to shade them in. Daryl, mm -hmm. maybe you can retrieve some of those blending stumps from my cabinet. Sure. If you remember what they look like. Mm -hmm. I just need one. You need more? Yep. <clears throat> okay. okay, perfect. So, uh, Oftentimes, if the object is uh, big, I just use my fingers, okay? And actually, this isn't too bad. I can actually smooth it out a bit. But if you want detail, you can always get one of the blending stumps and, um, you know, blend it so that it's a bit more uniform. 
OK and the harder you press and the more Conti crayon you apply you can see it gets whiter and whiter you see you see how so what is this technique actually called? Uh, well this is uh, the material we're using is Conti crayon the technique is uh, negative imaging okay yeah, kind of think of, uh, you know, photography. Mm -hmm. Back in the olden days when they used film black for cameras, and black and white uh, film. Well, when you take a photograph, the film, you would have a negative. And on the film, everything that was white turned black and everything that's black turned white. Mm -hmm. Remember the days mm -hmm. with film? Okay. Some people have never seen film be before because they grew up with digital cameras. But, you know, in olden days, negatives... Um, were very common, right? So the more you apply, the whiter it gets. Um, but if you press down too hard, it's going to be very hard to erase. Okay, so that's the easy part. Do do whatever's white. Okay. Now the hard part is this part here uh, on the color photograph. It was orange, but when you photo when you photocopy it, the orange turns gray. But you can tell there's some parts that are dark gray, and there's some parts that are lighter because mm -hmm. of the reflections and then this part is black okay mm -hmm. so we're going to have to um, do a couple of things here I'm gonna look at this and I can tell there's a section here that is brighter than the rest of them brighter than the rest yeah and then there's a section here there's two stripes here Stripe here. And I'm probably going faster than I should just because this is a demo. Uh, I'm not trying to be careless here, but when you guys do yours, remember you have lots of time today to do a very um, nice job of your drawing, so don't rush through things. Okay? Okay, and this is what you can do. Okay, you'll notice that when you look at the photocopy, it's bright and then it gradually darkens and then it gradually lightens and then it gets gradually dark and light again. Okay, so what we do is using your finger, you can. can add even more here but you don't want it too bright because it's, remember it's not the same brightness as the words Duracell so don't press too hard I'm just adding enough so I can blend with okay. and you always want to rub in a direction that lets you gradually turn it from uh, white to black. You don't want to go back and forth like this because what happens if you go back and forth? It blends in. Everything uh, blends into the same color. You might want to put the cap on and white. Yeah, I want, I want this part to be brighter and this part to be darker so I move in this direction. Right? So, And then here, it also gradually fades in. So on this side, I pull this way. Now, it's actually good to use fingers to do this. Does any, I, I mentioned this last time. Why is it good to use fingers sometimes? They have oil in them. Yeah, and the oil blends, helps blend um, charcoals and Conti crayons really well. Okay, so, um, and don't worry, this washes off, so, and it's not poisonous, so don't worry about getting your hands a little bit dirty today. It's not going to be as bad as uh, the charcoal was last time. Okay. Now, the thing is, I might have, I might have blended a bit too much, because I, I do want the center part to be quite bright. So 
I can always use my eraser and uh, straighten out the lines. Yeah, just get rid of a little yeah, bit of the center. the center. Yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. So in this case, I'm actually using the eraser as a drawing tool as well. So I don't want it. I don't want it to be solid black because this is black, right? It has to be um, darker, but not solid black. Okay. So as you, as you can tell, I'm making lots of smudges on the side. You have to periodically clean it. Um, but, you know, there's a couple of other details I can add in. And, um, you know, it's quite easy. Okay. I've, I've had lots of examples of this type of drawing. Um, last time I, I drew um, a faucet, you know, one of the faucets uh, from the sink, mm -hmm. very shiny metal, and so you can tell here the parts that were very shiny, I made very heavy white, and then the reflection. Some parts were darker, so I dragged it in to uh, to make the shadows. And anything bright and shiny, I filled in. Everything that's black, I left out, and then everything that's gray, uh, I had to. Uh, blend or you know smudge to make those shades of gray. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what you guys are going to do today, but um, you guys can pick any object you want. I mean, there's uh, lots of different things in the magazines. Just grab one and find something. Uh, if you find something that's black and white already, then just use it. If you find something color, then ask me to uh, photocopy it for you. Um, you know, if you find an object like this and go, oh, I want to draw this person, you know, I, I can photocopy it so you can see where all the white and grays are, okay? But uh, for the first one you do, I'm only going to give you a half-size sheet of paper, uh, this size. I'm not going to give you a full-size one uh, right away until you kind of get some practice. So we're going to do a minimum of two of these today, um, one half and then one full-size, okay? And I've got lots of examples. and. Uh, Actually, here's a couple of other examples uh, some of my students made, and they actually framed them very nice. You know, this is, a, uh, I think, a cat, and uh, lots of hair, whisk hair and whiskers, and, uh, and there's a wolf. So uh, Yeah, it's very nice. They spent a lot of time doing all the hairs, um, the eyes, the reflection in the eyes are black, right? So, you know, it's... Um, there's so many different things you can do. But for the first one that you do, you want to do something that's easy. You don't want to pick something that's got lots of grays or lots of details. So um, try to think of some black and white things, such as uh, very popular things include panda bears, zebras, uh, you know, penguins, tigers. Those are easy because it's just like black and white. But for the second one, um, you guys can pick something that's detailed, things of hair, uh, wood, you know, fabric. Uh, you can try doing clothing, um, you know, and then probably next week, we're gonna still, uh, next week I'm gonna give you one last big one that you do a very nice one. Okay, today is just uh, doing one small, one large, just for practice, but next week you can pick something challenging and do a nice one. Uh, just like these ones. These ones were the final projects that uh, students did two years ago. Okay, so um, yeah, you can get started, and I'll leave the spray and the Conti crayons and the paper up here. I uh, just help yourself. Um, the Conti crayons, first come, first serve. Uh, some of them are newer, some of them are older. But if you're if you happen to get one that's too like that's very um, smooth but very simple all you have to do is just grind it down and then the corners will be very sharp okay don't put these in the pencil sharpener and try to sharpen it because it won't work and you'll break it okay but um, it doesn't matter even if you get a brand new one after a couple minutes it becomes soft and round anyway so it, it doesn't matter if you get an old one or a new one they all turn uh, round and smooth very quickly okay uh, any questions? No? Okay. Uh, I'll give you some time to... 
I'll let you guys go into the magazine box and find some ideas and I'll prepare the paper for you and then when you're ready show me what you're gonna do and uh, I'll give you the paper and materials and then you can start doing it. Okay, thanks.